Hey, everybody. Welcome uh, to another week of Advanced Programming with Java here at Portland State University. Um, we are at week three. So uh, the first uh, program assignment was uh, due tonight. Um, uh, you got another one due next week. Uh, the cones, I hope, are all well in, uh, well in hand, well in progress. Heard, I got some questions from some people, and so uh, people have started on them. That's great. And uh, tonight, we're going to be spending most of our time learning about and, uh, and doing pair programming. Um, so, and and uh, I'm looking forward to it tonight. I'm uh, adding a little bit more structure around it than I have in the past. I'm really curious to see how that works for everybody. Um, are there grades for Cohen's? Yes, there are. Um, oh, and Code With Me, we'll talk about it later. It's not a plugin in the IntelliJ marketplace. It's a built-in feature. Um, oh, and I'll add a declare here. Thank you. Uh, cool. So um, let's start out, though, with Prime Minister's questions. I know everybody's been really busy working on Project 1, doing Cone, preparing for Project 2, all sorts of good stuff like that. Um, we've, you know, we've talked a lot on Slack. We've talked a lot on um, in emails and things like that. But what questions do people have about, um, uh, about uh, the, anything here? So let's see, here. So there's a couple questions. Yes, there's a grade for cones. By when should we submit the cones? Whenever it says in the assignment. I don't remember when they're due. Uh, February 15th. Yep, what, week six. Thanks. Uh, oh, we build on project one for two, three, and four. Yes, that is correct. So project one, uh, you'll use that same uh, code base, use that same Maven project for, yeah, project one, two, three, and four. Yep. Question here? Yeah. If you want to create a new branch, that's completely up to you. Um, when you submit, it creates, it tags the repository. And you can always create a branch from the tag if you need to go back in time, too. So you don't have to, it's, if you're familiar with uh, with, with branching and merging in, in GitHub, go ahead. Um, I have no requirements around, uh, around branching. Give people a moment to... Uh, to dial in, to, to dial in to, uh, to ask questions. How, how did you all find Project 1? Uh, I'll... I'm curious to see what everybody put down for how many hours that they spent, but what were some things that were surprising? Um, what were some things that, that weren't surprising? Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, interesting. Okay, so you, you did, you, you focused first of all sort of on the classes themselves, on the airline and the flight. And uh, then you're like, great, I'm almost done. This is like, I got all the code working. And then you started writing your main, you found a, a bunch more things to do and errors to check and yeah, stuff like that. Oh, interesting. Okay. Good to know. Cool. Okay, awesome. Um, let's see here. Lots of comments came in. Uh, let's see here. Oh, surprise how tricky. Uh, I found out to get the args ordering logic right. Yeah, command line parsing sort of is a thing. And um, I know that, yeah, it took me quite a while to sort of figure out uh, an algorithm or an approach that I liked. Um, let's see here. Uh, yep, looks like a couple people uh, seconded all of that. Uh, took more time than I expected. Yep. Um, you know, uh, the, the first assignment might seem pretty straightforward, but uh, there's, yeah, there's more there, especially when you, you know, count in having to write the documentation and having to uh, write the unit tests. I've test, test coverage is certainly probably most, something most people haven't, uh, haven't uh, encountered yet. Uh, command line args is the biggest pain. Yeah. And, and honestly, that's a bunch of the, you know, the lot of logic, especially in, uh, in the first couple of projects, is all there in the command line, um, uh, command line parsing. Uh, it's, it is what it is. And, um, but uh, I, I think 
one of the things that students told me in the past is that as you know, a, a, as the program evolves to support more options and the command line will change a little bit in project three, you'll see. Um, they, uh, they, they have opportunities to refactor the code, to make it better, um, and because you know, they have a suite of tests, they can do so uh, pretty, um, uh, pretty confidently. Let's see here. Um, uh, yeah, the crazy control flow and lots of if statements. Um, yep, that's, uh, you know, I think a lot of people get it to work the, uh, the first time, but then, uh, yeah, here again, I encourage you to uh, think about alternate approaches um, and refactoring the, the command line parsing because it'll be something that you'll be doing for a while. Um, okay, Got more command line parsing, time consuming. Yep, that's what you're paying money for. And uh, let's see here. Oh, passphrase for like GitHub or something. Yeah. Um, okay, good. Some good learning there. Excellent. Okay. Right on. Um, any questions about Project Two? I know some people are probably just now diving into it, but uh, <coughs> anything that uh, people like to know? Nope. Okay, project two is due uh, next week, um, and uh, we'll, we'll get we'll learn about project three tonight after some uh, some other stuff. Anything else I can answer for you before we dive into pair burnering? Okay. So, how many cones should we do a week? Um, it's like one of those, what's the sound of one hand clapping? Um, no, uh, it's, uh, I don't know. Uh, take the total number of cones divided by four. <clears throat> you know, uh, I think different people work at different paces. Um, I think I'm trying to think here. I think I've heard anecdotally that, not surprisingly, some of the more advanced cones that come at the end take a little bit more time um, to, uh, to figure out and to understand. So, uh, yeah, and I don't have a good idea of how much you, you know, how much progress you should be making. That being said, you know, projects are being assigned also. So yeah, I just encourage you to, you know, do a little bit every day, ideally, or at least, you know, sit down and uh, focus on them, just sort of bang through them. Because um, it's, uh, you know, yeah, the nature of the cones is they tell you what the answer is, and so it's really easy to sort of just cut and paste and not think about it, but you're not getting the lesson. Um, and of course, all of us need to, uh, you know, make our own judgment in terms of, you know, for anything, how much we focus on it versus just trying to get it done. But I do encourage you to uh, not necessarily savor, but give yourself time to really understand the lesson that the, the cones that are trying to teach you. It'll, it'll pay off in terms of just familiarity with the language, um, understanding the breadth of everything that's available. I help you go faster on the assignments. Hey, someone who didn't wait until the last minute and is glad they didn't. Good. <laughs> Although with so much work, like every minute becomes the last minute. So, good deal. Okay. Let's talk about some pair programming. I'm recording, right? Yeah. So uh, here's a handout that I shared in Slack. I'm also going to um, share it here in the, uh, in the Zoom chat for everybody so that you can. Uh, play along at home. Now, uh, gosh, I have, I've been, uh, I, I've had students do pair programming for a number of years now, and uh, it's always been fairly, I'd say, informal and, and unstructured. We watch a video that says, students can work together and you, you pair and everything, and um, this term I wanted to sort of up a notch. I, um, I I did a bunch of research in this because I really wanted to understand, you know, how it works. And so I put together. Um, well, sorry. Um, uh, so so uh, I, I put together a, a new lecture um, that I hope uh, most of you have have watched or at least yeah well, you know, watch the, the lecture. It's like you know twenty minutes on pair programming. Um, and uh, I've got a whole set of lecture notes, most of which is about mob and ensemble programming. We'll talk about that in a couple of weeks. Um, but what I wanted to do here is uh, give a little bit of a review 
of, of pair programming and then um, uh, talk about what we're going to do. So, uh, and, and really this is, um, you can think of this as a continuation of what we did last week with test-driven development, but now you'll be doing coding, although you start off coding with me, and then, um, uh, then uh, pairs of you will code together. Um, and what we're going to be doing is, pro is implementing um, what are called code katas, and we'll talk about those in a little bit. They're basically like simple little programs. Um, more complex than the, the Cohen's, but not as complex as, say, a project. You know, the, the, uh, and the intent is that we can get these done pretty quickly. So um, I'll, I'll spend a few minutes sort of talking about the, the exercise and what pair programming is and, and stuff like that. But then uh, I want to spend most of the time tonight actually uh, doing some pair programming. So uh, let's see here. Oh, and by the way, there are there will be three opportunities to pair program this term. It'll be this week, it'll be next week, and the week after. Um, you're only required to attend one of them, and that will inform the reflection that you um, that, that you submit. Although I do encourage you to participate in, in each one. And um, you know, this term we have the ability to pair program remotely or in person. Uh, of course, everybody at their own level of comfort. Um, but I again, encourage you to, um, to to participate in both um, to get uh, an understanding of what it's like coding physically next to someone and then coding with someone who is now now before I dive into sort of the details of all of this, um, there's something else that I'm, and then that we're going to experiment with is that um, all of us will be programming in the same code repository, and um, so what I uh, uh, and that can take a little while to set up. I'm, I'm doing this because what I used to do is say, great, everybody go off and follow the instructions to create your own repository. And I found that like sometimes that takes like a half an hour for some people and they got way behind. So, ah, okay, uh, let's just try it. So I created the repository. I set up a whole bunch of stuff and uh, we'll see how that goes tonight. So um, first thing that I'd like you to, uh, to do is go to this URL and I will just copy it here. There and uh, make yourself a, a Git clone of this. So uh, on your own local machine, please uh, make a checkout of that repository, and uh, and I guess make sure you can build it with uh, with Maven Clean Verify. Uh, we'll be collaborating together on this, uh, this repository. You do not need to run survey.sh. Thank you. Um, actually, I think I, oh I, mean, I, didn't, I thought I took out that script. Uh, I meant to. Just in case I didn't. Um, let's see, do I have that repository up here? Uh, will it hurt if we did? Uh, no, I don't think so. Um, you can just revert that change, though. So it might be interesting if two people do. Did, did you commit the change? If not, don't, don't, you know, don't commit the, the me.xml. Oh yeah, I do have submit and survey. I'm just going to take those out real quick. Uh, let's see here. Do I still have? Oh yeah, I got that here. So I'll just do git remove uh, submit and survey. Anything else I should remove? Uh, no. Do anything else? Um, the commit, don't need, don't need submit. Oops. Oh, nice. Uh, some people have, uh, have already committed. Excellent. Good deal. Thank you. At least I think they have. Let's see who's committed. Nice. Thanks, Sean. I was curious what you're doing. So, so this is what we're going to do. We're all going to be collaborating. So I want to make sure that each one of you is a collaborator. Um, and, and what I've done so far is I have, uh, everybody whose GitHub ID I had, because you had shared a um, repository with me, I sent you an invitation to, uh, to this repository. And so then, uh, well, most people have accepted it. Thank you. Great. So if you uh, if you haven't accepted the um, well, if, you, if you, please check your email to see if you got an invitation. 
Um, and if you have, please accept it. Um, and if you haven't, then uh, I am me either in the meeting chat or in Slack or something. Your um, uh, either your ID or share your uh, share your repository for the use of the class with me also. I've been using that a lot to help students like just do little like debugging and like you know I can't reproduce this thing here. I'll just, I'll pull down their code and um, uh, and make sure it works. That kind of stuff. Cool. So yes. So, so then please make sure that you have right access. And I'm trying to think of the easiest way to test that out. Probably see if you can, if you have like a little um, pencil here and what, if you try to edit it and it says, it doesn't make you, um, it doesn't force you to make a fork or anything like that. Give that a try. Um, here again, first time we're doing it. So I appreciate if you'd be doing that sort of in the background um, while I talk more about um, about pair programming. Oh, and, and just by the way, so we're all working in like one big sandbox. We're all playing in the in the, in the same pool uh, for the Git repository. Um, and actually, that's part of the lesson tonight. So we might see things like someone checks in some code that breaks. What are we going to do? Um, you know, we might have people that uh, I don't. There may be merge conflicts. I'm not sure. Um, but uh, in addition to pair programming, I want you to also experience what it's like having, uh, you know, a bunch of people. And actually, how many people do we have right now? We've got, okay, we've got 27. Um, you know, having a bunch of people all contribute to, uh, to a Git repository. It'll be fun. I think we're going to see. It's okay. So, pair programming. Um, I've got a whole bunch more detail, like I said, in the, in the lecture. Uh, no, Theo, no, we're not going to be working on different branches. We'll all have uh, different projects, and we'll, we'll see that in a minute. But everybody's, every room has their own uh, leap year project, and then um, several of us will be, uh, or, some, or some people, volunteers will be pairing with me to, um, to do fizz bugs. So no, we don't need no stinking branches. We're going to, uh, we're all going to work together. We'll give it a try. We'll see how it goes. So, uh, um, you know, I encourage you, if you haven't done so already, to check out the, uh, the prepared material all about pair programming. Um, I want to give a brief overview for anybody who, um, you know, hasn't seen it yet or just to sort of remind everybody you know, what it is that we're here to do. So, you know, in pair programming, um, it's not a solitary game anymore. I mean, you're, you're, you're working with other people. And so in its purest form, in pair programming has two people that sit at the same keyboard and work on the same problem at the same time. And the idea is that this is a very collaborative, conversational um, uh, style of programming. And when you uh, combine pair programming with, uh, with test-driven development, what you get is high quality code that is tested without building silos of knowledge. And um, when you're working with a team, uh, it can be really problematic when there are certain aspects of the software or certain uh, the capabilities that only one person on the team has. Um, that person then becomes a, a bottleneck and the rest of the team can't get the whole job done when one person has, uh, has information. And it's so fun being that bottleneck because you can get pigeonholed into just, you know, being, oh yeah, I'm the person that does this. I'm the, you know, I'm the database person. I'm the, uh, you know, I'm the person who writes the tests. Oops. That's, that's not good. So, uh, you know, pair programming itself here, fundamentally, is two people working on the same problem um, together at the same keyboard at the same time. But uh, we found that uh, adding a little bit of structure, especially when you're first doing it, really helps. Um, it gives people uh, you know, just, you know, a place to, uh, to get started and uh, it, it, it helps uh, orient people on what they're doing. So uh, in, in pair programming, there are traditionally uh, two roles. Each pair, each member of the pair, takes on a particular role. One role is called the driver. This is the, the or the, the hands. This is the person who's, whose hands are on the keyboard, who uh, is basically uh, the you know, intelligent input device who is uh, who's writing the code, right? And this person and the driver is thinking very tact, uh, tactically about, hey, what's, what's the next piece of code I need to write? What's the next um, you know, thing, thing I need to do? Um, and then the other person is in a role called the navigator. The navigator thinks more strategically, right? This is like the brain. So it's not that the person who is the driver doesn't use their brain. It's just that the navigator 
is doing more uh, brain work um, and is in constant conversation with the driver, right? They're talking about the code that's being written. Uh, hey, what we should do next was the ramification of the thing that we just did. Um, and so then this combination of the very uh, um, tactical driver and the more strategic navigator get the job done. Now, uh, it helps a lot to have people uh, change roles. So every few minutes, um, they'll uh, the pair traits roles. So the driver becomes the navigator, and the navigator becomes the driver. Um, and this provides different perspectives on the solution. Um, it gives people uh, a chance to let their brain do something else. Because um, it can be really tiring just being the person typing, or just being the person thinking and, and trying to articulate what their thoughts are. Um, and after, uh, either, well, I mean, right before you switch, um, so you, you, you pair for a few minutes, um, and we're going to do like five minutes of pairing, which doesn't seem like very much, and it's not, but um, I just want to see how that goes. Um, be sure to take a little time before picking up coding again to just have a very brief conversation about like what worked and what didn't work. Right, uh, but pairing is all about learning, um, and whether it's learning just uh, how to solve a problem, learning you know how to uh, you know use an API or a programming language, or just learning how to work with someone else, um, and just you know just start calling out, hey, like what's the one thing that we need to be doing differently? Hey, what's the one thing that works really well that we want to amplify and do more of? Um, and so this will help you, and, and you do this every couple of minutes, and you'll find that you improve very rapidly because you get a, a nice return on that investment for, uh, for talking with people. After, you know, after the, that brief reflection, um, start back up again. So people, so, so the pair has switched roles, and uh, the driver you know, starts up again where the previous driver left off. Um, one of the things that I, I encourage you to do is to resist the temptation to just do things my way. Ah, I'm the driver now, and I get to like, ah, I delete all that old code and uh, you know, do it the right way. Um, that's not going to work. It's not going to spend. It's going to waste a lot of time, um, and you uh, and uh, I'll probably you know bother the now navigator who uh, whose code you just deleted. So instead, uh, you know, talk about how the code can be improved. You know, so as a driver, you can say, hey, listen, uh, th you know, this variable name here, I don't quite understand what it means. Or it's like, oh, hey, you know, this if statement's looking pretty complex. Is the way that we can refactor it. Um, and that way, uh, it's a partnership, and you have both the person who wrote the code, who probably to them it makes perfect sense. And so then encouraging the uh, encouraging your partner to articulate the um, uh, to, to, to articulate both the uh, deficiencies and then also the motivation for what's currently there, so that you can work together to make things better. Oops! Ah, sorry, click the wrong button. Uh, people in. I wish there was a way for me to just let people in, but let anybody can join, I guess. Um, let's see here. Uh, oops. So that's that's driver navigator. I just want to pause here for any any questions or any um, uh, any observations that that people have. Is anybody here? Well, I'll ask for questions first. Has anybody done structured pair programming before? I'm just curious. Is it, is it covered in any other classes, or is it something that you've done professionally? Yeah, a full stack class does pair programming. Oh, excellent, cool. I didn't realize that. Um, would, would you mind talking about your experiences with it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, so IntelliJ co for me in the full stack class. Nice. Okay, cool. Yeah, oh yeah, so you did both in, per, uh, in person and remote, you preferred in person. Good to know. That's pretty cool. So let's see here. Oh, good. It looks like some people, uh, uh, somebody uh, Claire did it in her internship. Uh, oh, TCC classes did it. Uh, Oh, COBOL, is that, is that, was that Warren Harrison's COBOL class? He told me he was doing pair programming, uh, which uh, I, I got a huge kick out of like pair programming and COBOL. It makes complete sense, but I see anything in COBOL is kind of giggle worthy, so it's great. Um, oh, it looks like CS300 talks about it now. Great. Okay. Nice. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Theo, you know, your observations about um, having uh, someone more senior, someone more junior. Yep. Okay, good. So it looks like there has been some degree. I, I'm, so I'm really curious then for people who have experienced it before, what your uh, experiences will be like tonight and how it uh, is similar and different from your previous experiences. And then everybody else who hasn't had a chance to uh, experience it, um, uh, I'd get to do it for the first time. So the driver and the navigator is pretty much the traditional way of, of pair programming, and it works really well. Um, but uh, over the years, uh, there's been some refinements, some sort of like codification of, hey, here are some patterns that work well for, for pair programming. Um, and we're going to try to apply some of them tonight. So uh, the, the first is called strong style pairing, which uh, is, is, is really good when you've got uh, so, you know, two people that ha are at different levels of experience. Um, so like, you know, as was mentioned there, so uh, it, 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 it's good to uh, transfer knowledge from one person to, uh, to another. Now, it's, it doesn't mean that one person is, you know, the more experienced person is typing and the other person is sitting there watching, right? This isn't like coding theater. Um, it is, uh, instead what it is, is it's a conversation. And uh, actually, probably in this case, um, the, uh, the, the, you know, when you've got the driver, driver and the navigator, uh, sorry, it, it's more about transferring knowledge. Um, it's really important when people are talking that they do so at the appropriate level of abstraction um, for each other, meaning that, uh, hey, if you're working with someone that, uh, you know, knows the programming language, um, you know, you don't need to tell them every letter to type. But sometimes when like, someone's brand new, um, that could very well happen tonight. Right, where it's like, oh, I remember I wrote a unit test like, you know, a week ago for my project, but wait, what's that syntax again? And, you know, people can freeze up and things like that. Uh, it's okay, you know, sometimes I say, okay, you, know, you start out with, you know, declaring this method as public. And, you know, and then, oh yeah, you want the return type. So, uh, you know, it, it, again, it's, it's, a, it's a discussion, um, and, uh, and the reason that you switch back into roles is that you really get to understand how to communicate uh, with the other person. One of my uh, favorites, uh, one of my favorite quotes in, in pair programming is that uh, when you're the navigator, in order for an idea to go from your head into the computer, it must go through someone else's hands. That other person is the driver. Um, and, and what this does is it forces you to articulate what you're thinking, which can be really hard, right? But this is a great skill to have because it helps you clarify things and it helps you identify like maybe where your logic doesn't make sense or where you have a gap in knowledge. And that's when the conversation can turn to really resolving those gaps. So that's strong style pairing. Um, and uh, you know, probably when we do the fizz buzz, um, you know, there's some people for, for which they might have like a real good idea of, uh, of what the driver should type, and so when they nav navigate, it might be a little stronger, um, and then other people, it might be a more on even ground. We'll see. Now, another uh, pattern for pair programming that I wanted to call out here tonight is called ping pong pairing, um, and this is, uh, this is great for test room development. It's pretty straightforward, right? One, uh, one person will write the test, and then the other person makes a pass, um, and uh, then together, uh, they can refactor. Um, and uh, then uh, once, you know, once the code's been refactored, then you start the red, green uh, refactor cycle all over again. And then you have, uh, then you know, that person will write the, then the person who made it pass writes the next test and passes it and then hands it over to the uh, other person to, to make it pass. Um, this is kind of a fun uh, way of doing it and it makes sure that each person, each, each member, um, uh, gets to experience writing tests and also right in the production code. So um, that is a very quick overview of pair programming. Uh, here are a couple of articles that I have found very helpful, just sort of giving you a good overview um, for, uh, for, for pair programming. Now, tonight, we're going to be pairing remotely. Um, and we actually, we've got four people in the room, so that, that's good. So maybe we'll have two pairs here. Um, but then we've got a bunch of people who are remote also. And uh, remote, pair remote, remote pair programming, yep, it's a thing. Um, and really it's not such much of a big deal. Um, and so then, uh, you know, because really what's most important isn't, uh, you know, isn't the fact that people are literally sitting next to each other and literally using the same keyboard, um, as long as you're having a conversation. 
as long as uh, what you're doing is collaborating with someone else to better understand the problem so you can have the best solution uh, possible. So uh, there, are, there are a couple of um, uh, tools and techniques. Um, one is to, uh, to use GitHub to uh, basically pass code back and forth, right? So, you know, hey, I, I'll say you're doing ping pong uh, pairing, and so then, you know, hey, you write the test, you see it fail, and then you check it in, you, you commit it, yeah, you commit it, and then you push it up, and then the other partner pulls down that, uh, pulls down that change, and then uh, the mix pass, together you have a refactoring, write the next test, and go back and forth that way. Um, so lots of uh, get pushes and get pulls, um, and I think that's a, a really good way of, uh, of doing it. Um, also, uh, IntelliJ has this feature called Code With Me um, that allows uh, you to basically have, oh, it's like collaboratively editing in a Word doc, right? You have multiple people that are all looking at the code, um, and uh, they can literally, uh, you know, just click on a line of code and, and start typing. Um, this is really neat, uh, and it's really cool, and it helps, uh, you know, it makes it really easy to uh, change between uh, pairs. Um, however, one of the things that I've found is that it's, um, uh, I'm going to, that, 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 uh, sorry, one of the things that I've found that it's, that's difficult to, to do is to resist the urge when you are the navigator to type, right? Navigators shouldn't type, all of, the, all of your thoughts should go through somebody else's hands. Um, and so then uh, uh, just be mindful if you're using code with me that the intention is that this isn't a free-for-all, everybody's coding at the same time. Um, really, you only want one person um, coding, uh, you know, coding and the other person is, is talking about the code, is, is perhaps instructing them, if it's more of a strong style, uh, or at least in conversation with them about the code. Well, so now what code are we gonna write tonight? Um, we're gonna be working on uh, what are called code katas. And these are very small programming problems that uh, aren't, aren't in of themselves very interesting as things like scoring a game of tennis or, um, you know, uh, writing, uh, uh, what is that, mine, the, 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 the guessing, so, so like Wordle or something like that, right? Um, you know, you're not uh, solving world hunger or anything. Instead, the whole idea is that these, this is programming meant for practice, for exploring a new language, for learning a new tool, or, or, or like working with a new programming style, like test driven development. Um, and just like the cones, they're not meant to be brushed through quickly. It's like, oh good, look, you can, you know, you can bang out some code that converts numbers into Roman numerals, good for you. But no, you're supposed to be learning about test driven development, you're supposed to be learning about working with other people. So um, here again, it's, it's good to get things done and you want to, you know, of course move forward, um, but, uh, but that's not the point. Uh, the, the point is to use simple programming exercises uh, that allow people to focus on how you're solving the problem, not necessarily the problem that you're solving. So uh, tonight we're going to start with um, the FizzBuzz kata. And, and what we're going to do is um, we're going to work in what I'm calling the operating theater. So like when you're a doctor, at least this is sort of like you know, traditionally, right? You've probably seen this where there's literally a theater where the, you know, the surgeon or the, the person, you know, yeah, the sur surgeon, person doing surgery is down at the bottom and there's all the stadium seating around them where like all of the, 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 the students watch. And that's kind of like what I'm thinking about how this is going to work at the beginning of class tonight. So what um, I'm, I'm looking for is uh, five or six volunteer students um, to pair program with me. Either here in the classroom, we can do it. Uh, you know, next to each other or uh, anybody who is remote. Um, and what we'll do is uh, we'll maybe do some strong style, maybe do some ping pong, depending on sort of how things are going. And we're going to work on a simple fizz buzz kata. Um, now, I just want to call out that, uh, hey, this is only week three of the class. First time many of you are pair programming. Everybody's at a different level, um, and that's okay. Um, and so then, hey, you know, I appreciate anybody who volunteers, who has the courage to say, great, I will go code, you know, with my professor in front of my peers. Let's see how this goes. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think we'll, we'll, we'll be able to tell when you, uh, when it makes sense uh, for, you know, maybe me to take the lead more and for, for you to take the lead more. Um, it'll, it'll, I think it'll be, it'll be good. So if you, uh, if you want to volunteer, Tonight, uh, what I'd like you to do is to go in uh, into Maven here and sign up for, sorry, in the palm.xml, no, sorry, go into the FizzBuzz um, 
uh, project. You can also do this in IntelliJ if you've opened up your project in IntelliJ. And look in the pong.xml. Looks like some people might have already done it. I had a developer section here. Ah, excellent, great. We've got Clara, we've got Ashambi. We still need students, volunteers, three, four, five, and six. And boy, if anybody else wants to, feel free to add your name there at the end. It might, be, might make for some, um, uh, some Git, uh, Git conflicts and stuff, but we'll figure it all out. Um, so, so please, uh, take a moment um, to, uh, if you'd like to volunteer, to uh, put, put your name in there. And if you can't edit the file, um, then, uh, here we go, someone else. Um, uh, if you can't edit the file, please send me your uh, ID and, um, and I'll add, add you. So I'm just going to take a quick uh, pause. I'm just going to pause the recording while I do a little bit of work here. This will be fun. Okay. Thanks to everybody who, who signed up. Um, and by the way, since we're all going to be doing this uh, in the pair, you know, when we pair with each other, yeah, please make sure that you can uh, that you can write to the repository. So let's see here. Uh, hey, Clara, would you mind coming off mute and so we can start? Uh, oh, actually, well, uh, actually, wait. I think there's more I need to set up in the introduction, isn't there? Um, yes, there. Yeah, there is. Okay. So thanks for everybody who's, who's signing up. Um, let me uh, let, let me talk about uh, what we're going to do exactly. So uh, FizzBuzz, which maybe some of you have heard of, is it, a super simple kata, um, and it's great for test driven development. So I'll just open it up here. Um, basically, uh, what, what what you what you do is uh, you know you're, you're given a number, and uh, if the number is uh, divisible by three. Then uh, that's not three. That is fizz. If it's divisible by five. You say it's buzz. Um, and uh, oh, and by the way, if it is actually get there at the bottom. Uh, yeah. Oh, and then for bonus points, if a number is both multiple of three and five, uh, print fizz buzz. Print them both. Now. I'm sure you're all kind of surprised, like, this is a really easy problem. I can, like, solve this, you know, just by writing on paper. Yes, it's true, but we're going to explore pair programming and test-driven development using this very simple problem. Um, and so, you know, ultimately, hey, you know, write a program that just iterates, you know, the numbers 1 to 100, and then for each one of them, hey, if it's, you know, if it's divisible by 3, do fizz, if it's divisible by 5, buzz, or if it's divisible by both, do fizz buzz. That's ultimately what you need to do. Now, I'll keep that open. Um, so again, uh, we're, we're going to, I, I, I'd like us to work with red-green refactoring um, uh, cycle. And so then, uh, you know, we'll, we'll write a failing test first uh, in the FizzBuzz test. Oh, and by the way, um, let me get my IntelliJ open here. So uh, in, as you probably noticed, in that repository, um, I've created a FizzBuzz project, and actually, let me go get those, those latest changes down. Oops. Oh, come on. Oh, sorry. The, uh, the Zoom controls are driving me a little crazy. Oh, they are? Okay. Great. Uh, 12 commit for four files that were changed. Oh, good to know. Um, we've, uh, and, and, and so what I did over the weekend was I populated this repository with uh, a FizzBuzz project. Oh, because someone created Java Kata's. Nice to know. Um, and I also created a bunch of, I uh, will see the leap year Kata, which will be what you'll be all doing. And I have a bunch of, uh, I have a project for each breakout room. Uh, I think there might be as many as 40 people here tonight. Um, so that's when people are really short, of course. Um, and uh, so you'll, that's where you'll work, so you won't necessarily be, um, so you don't have to worry about other people, other pairs working in exactly the same pair. We'll talk about that. So uh, here we've got FizzBuzz and FizzBuzz test, and this is what we'll start pairing on in a moment. But here's how we're going to do that. Um, we're we're going to work in seven minute uh, chunk, uh, chunks of time called Pomodoros. There's something called the Pomodoro technique, which is all about uh, being very focused on one problem for a little bit of a time, having frequent breaks to let your mind uh, sort of like relax before it goes back into it. 
Um, this is a really good way to work at a sustainable pace and keep your energy up and keep engaged in the problem uh, over time. Um, and so we'll start with one of the, the volunteers who will pair for me for like five minutes, that's it, uh, and be either a driver or a navigator. Um, and hopefully in that time we can implement you know, a test, maybe two. Um, and then we'll take uh, uh, two minutes to reflect on the experience, uh, sort of you know, talk about what it was like to, uh, to pair together, and then move on to the next uh, volunteer. Um, and so then uh, what we can do is we'll use, um, well, I kind of wanted to start with, uh, with, with GitHub to, uh, to, to move the code back and forth. We'll see how that goes. We can also use code with me, maybe. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, we'll do this for, I don't know, like an hour or so. And so then, let's see here, seven minutes. That's probably at least one rotation. Maybe some people will do two. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, and it's something that, you know, we'll find compelling then we can keep going. Or maybe we'll finish the whole kata um, before then. Uh, don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. Um, and then, hey, you know, every couple of, of Pomodoros, um, we'll let uh, people in the operating theater um, give, us, uh, give us some feedback um, on what they saw and, um, and sort of gather their, exp their, their observations um, to inform uh, sort of what we do next. OK, so let's see here. Looks like, great, we've got six volunteers. We will start from there. Uh, okay, awesome. So hey, Clara, you're up first. Would you mind coming off mute, please? Yeah, for sure. Excellent. Yeah, sounds good. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing okay. How about you? Well, I'm, I'm doing okay, too. I, uh, <laughs> I, I, I went to Best Baguette for, uh, for, uh, for, for dinner, hadn't been there. Um, in, actually, I've never been to the one downtown. I used to go to the one in Beaverton occasionally. I haven't been there in years. And, and like my favorite bong mi is the sardine bong mi. Nice. Um, and so maybe that's why no one in the room volunteered to pair with me tonight because of my breath. Um, but it was, it, was, it was good. It was a good dinner. Anyway, cool. Well, let's get started. Let's see. You said um, that you wanted to be a driver. Uh, is that right? Is that the role you'd like to play? Yeah. Excellent. Cool. Well, um, then uh, how about you share your screen? That um, works for me. And, yeah. Cool, and I will set a timer here. So see that phone. Um, and I'll set for five. We'll see how five minutes uh, five minutes works. Okay. Let's see here. Awesome. Cool, great. Oh, great. You got FizzBuzz test over on the uh, the left, and FizzBuzz on the right. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's see here. What, what would be a good first test? Did you have any ideas that you wanted to start with? Yeah, I was thinking about that. Are we doing this passing in like a number as a command line argument to work with? Yeah, you know, we could start there. Um, like, you know, I think ultimately uh, what they want us to do is just you know print out one to a hundred. Okay. Um, but if we're doing a test driven, yeah, let's just work in small chunks. Sure. Um, so yeah, so like, what would a a good first test be? Um, why don't we look at a number? Maybe let's do a happy path. Let's look at a multiple of three and verify that it is a multiple multiple of three and that main prints fizz. Okay. That's unreasonable. Sounds good to me. Is that biting off too much? No, I think it's a good place to start. All right. What's next, Navigator? Okay, well, so then, um, now do you wanna actually test the main method or should we have like a, just like a, a method, uh, another static method on, mm -hmm. on FizzBuzz that we write a unit test for. Because we could test main method and use an integration test for that. Eh, let's just make a method in okay, FizzBuzz. Cool. Okay, so let's see here. I think we can get rid of that can instantiate FizzBuzz class. All right. right. That's not terribly interesting right there. So yeah. Yep, cool. we'll that. Okay, yeah, so let's, let's write a new test. Yep, void, and let's see here. Let's call, let's say, how about um, the word three is fizz? The word three? Yeah. Is fizz. Right. Okay. Nice. Now, and now, now it's conventional in Java to have methods begin with a lower case. Oh, that's letter. right. Would, would that, yeah, does that make sense? Okay, Yes, cool. that's okay. fine with me. And so let's see here. We want to have uh, a method that we call over in the FizzBuzz class that will, what, you send in a number and it returns uh, a string. So uh, yeah, we could, yeah, we could write it over there. 
and do a little public static situation. Yeah, yeah, it needs to be static. Good call. Yep. All right. What's this guy called? This is returning fizz. So that'll return the string, right? So we pass in the number and returns a string. Yep. What should we call it? Uh, how about just like fizzbuzz? Good catch. Yep, and I'll take yeah the int and then yeah. Sure, why not? Okay. Uh, now, okay, now that we have that, let's go write our test. Okay. Okay. And said so you want three, right? So uh, let's see here. Uh, do, you, do you remember the uh, the assert methods from uh, from yeah? So assert mm -hmm. that. I like using hand pressed. Yeah. And then oh, import that. Yeah. Oops, wrong button. Uh, we want to do, is it alt enter? I think, yep. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Yay. And so let's see here, assert that, and then we want the thing that we want to test. So uh, you need to call the fizzbuzz method. Um, do you know how to call a static method? Uh, lambda or nah? Not in this case. No, I, I think, no, we just want to call it straight out. So we probably want a fizzbuzz object then, right? Well, we made the method static, so you don't need to create an object. Hmm. It probably doesn't matter. Yeah. So to say, so uh, to call a static method, you have the, the name of the class, so capital F fizzbuzz, and then dot the name of the method. So capital F fizzbuzz dot little f fizzbuzz. Yeah. Nice. And we pass in three. Yep. Then it uh, should be equal to. Oh, that's right. Equal yeah, to. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. So awkward. And then. Add that really quick. I need to import that also. Nice. Yeah, no, go ahead. Yeah. Like that? Yeah. I think that looks good. Um, let's see here. Yeah, let's run it. See what we've got. Hopefully, a nice fail. Well, it looks like it didn't oh, run. Yeah. Oh, yeah, missing return statement over there. Yeah. It's just return blah for now. Nice. Good. Yeah, making it fail and making it pass. I got the mood lighting here going on in the classroom. Oh, nice. Oh, and that's our five minutes. Cool. <laughs> we did it. Very excellent. Yeah, no, that, that was awesome. Great way to start, Claire. I really appreciate it. So, so what'd you think? I'm going to put two minutes on the, the clock. Let's talk about like what our, what our experiences were. Um, I know it wasn't much, but like, uh, what would you think? Uh, I always enjoy pair programming. I really like talking through things as I work. And I know there's the whole like rubber ducky method, but they don't really talk back. So yeah. I really enjoy just bouncing ideas off of people and getting little tidbits of stuff here and there. So yeah, I'm, I'm into it. Wish we had more time, but Excellent. someone well, like else will take the torch. Round, and everybody's gonna get to experience it for yeah quite a while just with with, with, with a pair, but this is more about demonstration right now. Um, oh, thanks for, for, for committing that. Um, yeah. I just wanted to say uh, thank you once again. I really appreciated um, uh, that, well, you volunteered to go first, but it looks like, yeah, you had a, a good grasp of, um, of, of JUnit and, uh, and, and of Java. Good stuff. Okay. Um, while, while Claire is committing that, any, um, any comments or observations that other people in the, in the operating theater uh, have that they uh, like, like to share? Uh, yeah, I was going to say uh, I liked when I had the discussion about like static versus non-static because that was something I get tripped up on a lot of like, do I call it by the class or by an instance of it? So like having somebody to bounce back and forth and be like, oh no, it's it's right now it's static. So, and it's like, oh yeah, okay, cool. That would, uh, having that is definitely a huge time saver. Awesome. Thanks, Theo. Okay, thanks, Claire. It looks like you got everything all committed. Appreciate that. Let's see here. Up next, dude number two is Kaushambi. Uh, did you come off mute? Hello. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Let's see here. And you indicated that you uh, wanted to be a driver. Is that correct? Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Let me go and share my screen. Hang on. Uh, one. We'll start five minutes on the clock. Okay. Thanks. And did you pull down? Oh, awesome. Looks yes. Like you 
pull down and clarify for, his changes. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. So let's see here. How, how about you run the test just to see where we're at? All right. Okay. Okay. Still seeing the same thing. Um, okay. Well, hey, do you, do you have any ideas of where you want to go next uh, with this? Uh, let's try to fix this test and then move on to the next one. Great. Uh, yep. So right now, uh, uh, this thing, the method. Oh, well, I think yeah. you're looking at the test over there. Oh, uh, yeah. To, yeah, yeah <laughs> you're right. Okay. Nice. Yeah. So the method returns blah right now. Uh, what we want to do is uh, check if it is uh, divisible by three and probably return fifth. Well, I mean, I suppose if we wanted to like do it the, the absolute simplest way, we just change blah to fizz. Oh. Why, oh. You know, why, why don't we do that? The thing I like about that is um, this way, you know, we're always writing. It, it, yeah, we'll, we'll add another test case and uh, and see it fail. Okay. Yeah, let's give that a try. So you want me to do this? Right? You just write code which will pass. <laughs> pass we don't write any extra code. Uh, sorry, what, what, sorry, what was that? Uh, actually, we are, um, uh, we are not dividing by three right now because we are just trying to pass it. And yes. we have a rule okay. that uh, we only write that only code of production, which is uh, means valuable to pass it. No extra code required. Okay, got it. Yeah, just trying to be you know as minimal as possible. Great, okay, it's working. That's, oh, okay. Uh, good. Yeah, I guess it makes sense. Okay. Well, excellent. So, okay. Um, now let's see here. What's the next test yeah. that uh, that we could write? Okay. So the next step, uh, the next test we could write is if uh, the if we pass the number five, we should we should get, uh, get buzz as the output from our uh, method. Yep. Yep. Okay. Right. Yeah. All right. So I'll just add another test here. Yeah. I guess I could kind of copy. Okay, yeah. This and five. Well, actually, there and yeah, we want the yeah, uh, and actually, the word five is his fizz. That's a that's a kind of a weird name for a method. And I think Claire was <laughs> trying to tell me that. I remember she, you know, when I said the word, Do you want three, this? Yeah, three is fizz. She kind of laughs like, "What are you talking about?" Sorry, yeah, something yeah, like that. <laughs> the word three. That's okay, right. okay. Yeah. But cool. no, no, hey, Clara, no, that's totally on me. I'm sure I said we can go check in the recording afterwards. I'm sure I said the word three is fizz, right? Uh, but no, this is good. This is why we refactor it. Okay, cool. Uh, three is fizz, five is five is buzz. Yeah. Right? And now I'm an extra. So could you change on line 16 the name of the second test method? Uh, oh, sorry. No, 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 right. no, 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 apologize. Right. Again, you're, you're, you're the driver. This is why, this is why <laughs> you have the pair, right? The, yeah. Okay, okay, excellent. Now let's run. Uh, the second test. Yeah. Okay, it fails as expected. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, so then how do we make this pass? Okay, so now is the time when we add the check. Right? I think so. <laughs> okay, cool. So if a number is divisible by three, then I return first. Otherwise, I return buzz. Yep. Sounds yeah, good. the least amount of logic. Okay. So if number, actually, you know what? Yeah, two, three, equal eight point zero. Then fizz. Otherwise, I'm just gonna return buzz. Nice. Make that all. work. Let's run the tests. Uh, nice. Yep. Okay. Yep. Gosh. Okay. Uh. Yeah, 41 more seconds. Like, what's the, uh, let's, let's talk about, like, what is the next, uh, what, what's the next? The next the test. Which the next test would uh, be for the fizz buzz thing. When we pass 15 or a, or a multiple, which is, I mean, a, a number which is a multiple of both three and five, then yeah. we should get buzz, fizz buzz, sorry. So that should be the third nice. test. I can write okay. that out. Do we have time? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, 30 <laughs> seconds. It's oh okay. my God. Okay. <laughs> ah, 
Uh, it was, oh, come on. You, you, I'll have to finish it. Come on. This is good. Yeah. It'll take me that, mm -hmm. at least that long to like get the two minutes. Yeah. Time, though, cool. Up. So anyway, the test is done, but it fails. Okay, I guess nice. I'll just uh, commit this much and pass it on. Sweet. Well, uh, hey, hey, before before you do that, what, what are some of your thoughts? Uh, what, yeah. what was it like? Yeah, I think uh, I probably started looking at the big picture right over there when I suggested what should be the logic. But I guess uh, someone else also, uh, I don't know their name, but they kind of explained that how we're only adding only a little bit of code. So I guess that was a, a good point that I kind of learned today. So yeah. Nice. But it takes discipline, doesn't it? Yeah, Where it does. Like, and here is the thing about these katas, right? They're they're so yeah. simple that yeah. it's like, yeah, great. You know, hey, I'm sure you know we could all implement this without doing any test driven development. But um, but here again, it's it's meant to help us explore it, and so then we need to have discipline to say, no, I'm going to focus on the practice that I'm learning because it's not about solving the problem. Because this is a you know, dirt easy problem to solve. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, and in fact. Uh, the, the the kind of test cases that we've written, for example, five is five is buzz. The the code, uh, if I if I would have written the code like if number equal equal three return fizz, if number equal equal five return buzz, that would have that would have sufficed too. It it would, and then because this way, hey, if we were to write, uh, you know what, uh, number you know ten, <laughs> uh, ten would be buzz out of the out of the yeah. game. Uh, you know, um, I think we've learned the lesson. So I don't know if we yeah. necessarily need to like uh, reinforce that, but it's good to have in mind. Excellent. Yeah. Cool. Uh, all right, I'll uh, commit this very quickly and I'll stop sharing. Yeah. And and what other observations uh, did uh, did folks have? Anything else they'd like to share about that particular uh, pairing session? Um, I guess having someone with you can kind of keep you reined in so you don't try to do too much because I totally would have done the same thing um, that she just did of like knowing what's next and trying to implement it and not sort of scaling back to just do a little bit of something first yeah, yeah keeps you in check I'm, yeah I'm, I'm the same way it's it's oh I don't know it's like you know dieting or whatever where it's like hey when you've got someone else there sort of holding you accountable or saying you know who's seeing you sneak you know sneak the extra cookie or whatever it's like okay yeah that's right i'm i'm, I'm here to be disciplined i'm here to learn excellent thanks so let's right. see. I, uh, yeah i pushed the commit thank you yeah uh who's up next uh student number three uh shriyoshi shriyoshi hi hey Thanks for volunteering. And and you wanted to be the driver? Uh, I changed it to navigator later, oh, but I can be the driver. Nope, up, up to you. I, I haven't had a chance to drive tonight. I wouldn't mind. So okay, I can me, be the navigator then. Yeah, I'll share my desktop and uh, let's see here. I will get IntelliJ up and we're gonna start the, uh, not sure the timer just yet. So let's see here, here's FizzBuzz. And where is FizzBuzz test? FizzBuzz test. Uh, let me do a split screen so people can see me. Let me make this nice and big. Okay, and I'll start the five minutes. Uh, so what's next? So, so see. there are two options. We can test for a number like which is divisible by. Uh, five or 15 or another one there was a case like if if none of these are divisible like three five or 15 there should be a number we can create a test for that as well okay cool well we do have one failing test now so yeah. um let's get that passing first then we can move on to a couple other test cases so the right. uh let's see here the 15 which is equal to fizz buzz uh <laughs> is failing so let's oh i Doing the same thing again. I think there it is. Okay. Um, any idea on how how we how we want to fix this? Um, in case we can uh, like write uh, make it fail again. Like the if I write uh, number divisible by fifteen at the top line, 
it will mostly be correct. But uh, if we write it in the bottom currently, uh, like before return buzz, it should okay, be. Okay, so yeah, um, what do we want here? It will, fail, it will fail again in that case as well because the number 15 is divisible by three also. So it will print fizz again. Okay, so what, what should we uh, put then? So we should write um, like number divisible by 15 at line number eight. Means ah, put it up first, the yeah. call. Okay. Mm. Uh, okay, so if number is uh, divisible by 15, uh, and then, Oh, wow. we, I'm sorry, I totally this up. Wait a second. I, I'm not happy with this. I uh, was trying to be tricky there. There. Now I'm back to where we started. Okay. So if number, number divisible is by 15. 15. Return. Yes. Hmm. Oops. Wow. This is a... Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Nice. Um, you know, I realize we've been doing a lot of red green. We haven't talked about refactoring yet. Do you see any opportunities to refactor this code? Uh, the test one or the uh, we can uh, use, any of the code. We can use constants in place of uh, writing phase or buzz everywhere. I like that. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to use the um the refactor. Yeah, and say introduce constant. Nice, good call. And so, yeah, let's call it fizz. And then we can put it over here as fizz. Oops. Uh, and say it's like fizzbuzz dot fizz. Nice. And then similarly for fizzbuzz and buzz. Yeah. I assume. Same. Okay, cool. I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut. So uh, option command C on the Mac. Buzz and it's going to be pretty good long day. Nice. Yes. You know, actually, I'm 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 really glad that you suggested that because I think we spelled it wrong. <laughs> I technically speaking, I if we go back and look at the kata, uh, I think they're supposed to be capitalized or something. Um, and then this makes it really easy to fix that. So we're fixing it in one place. Let me go check that real quick. Yeah, it's capital F and capital B. Well, but we can fix that. It's okay. It's okay. okay. So let's just run that. Make sure that it. It should works. match ultimately. That's our aim. Sorry, that can you say it again, one. please? It should match whatever is in the FizzBuzz and FizzBuzz tests. Yeah, nice. Cool. Okay. Well, hey, this is a good, that's a good refactoring. Uh, so let's see here. So what's next? The next would be, we have not tested yet for any other number, which is not yet divisible by three, five, and 15. It will directly fail in this case because we are not returning any numbers. Okay, you have a favorite number? That's not a fizz buzz 20, number? 20, um, uh, 13. 13, okay. Yeah, any prime number would fail. <laughs> <laughs> is, uh, is 13. Okay, so then we'll say assert that, huh. Uh, this buzz. I'm going to see another opportunity to. Uh, oh no, we're done. Equal to the square of 13. Okay. Ooh, those five minutes just uh, fly by. Let's just see this one fail. Okay. Well, what would you think? Uh, the reason for it, it is failing. Uh so yeah, we're, we're in the reflection time. So what did you think about uh, pair programming just now? Uh, yeah, what <laughs> this experience is like, um, so we tend to go sometime uh, without writing code. We try to think the logic first. So we, this is a mind shift. So this is the, the way we, I started the project one also is writing the input first. Otherwise we may not cover all the test cases. Yes, you know, and that's kind of that's why I have the uh, and that's why I have the 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 code coverage requirements because I think it's actually a pretty good way to you know encourage you, force you all 
to, uh, to, to do pair programming, or sorry, to do uh, test driven development. Yeah. Thank nice. you. Cool. Excellent. Thank you very much. I appreciate you volunteering. Thank um, you. Any other thoughts on that one? What people think of those refactors? So they seem like the right time to refactor? Yeah. Yeah, I found that it's like, you know, it helps refactor after you've written a little bit of code already. Oh yeah, do mod fixing first. Yeah, yeah, good, good deal. Yeah, well, we can talk about what are other other ways to approach it that might be simpler. But this is good. But write your test first, right, and then refactor afterwards. Awesome. Let's see who's next. Logan, you're up. I saw you just joined again. You got all. You got every, oh, and hey, you're Logan. Cool. Uh, let's let's go sit over there. Oh, actually, uh, no, because I need to have recorded. Okay. Yeah, awesome. So, uh, cool. Here's Logan, everybody. Say hi to the class. We're in person. This is good. Okay. Um, and see, and you want to drive, right? Okay. Excellent. Then, yeah, please share your screen. Changes. Um, so the question I was thinking is, uh, we take a thing here that we return a string. Yeah. So, and also we're not doing anything yet for numbers that aren't three to five. Okay. So yep. We probably have that. Yeah, yeah. So I think yeah, that's the, the next thing is to yeah accommodate that. So, um, yeah, because right now. We don't have much in the way of. Uh, we don't have any else's, but that's probably okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, hey, oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, you want to sit down and make yourself comfortable? Um, Although, at this desk is kind of impossible. But luckily, the tables here in the classroom are probably better. So, yeah. So, okay. So, let's see, we probably need to have what? You probably need to put another if statement around buzz. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Yeah, I need to turn an, an int into a string, right? Does it get a second int to string? Um, no, not exactly. I think what I like to use in this case is the um, method value of from the stink string class, so it's a static method. So. Yeah, you want capital S string for the name of the class name, and then dot value of. Yep. And then number. Sweet. Yeah, let's give that a, a whirl and see if it, uh, if it works. Oh, I know that happens to me too, right? The crazy yeah. Mm -hmm. So actually, you can use the gutter, um, little uh, little green triangle in the in the gutter, uh, the margin. Sorry. No. Oh no, IntelliJ. Oh, I can actually point at his screen. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Does everybody else use dark mode in IntelliJ? Wow. Okay. Uh, must be my old eyes or something like that. I, uh, I just can't distinguish the colors very well. Nice. Okay. Now let's run the rest of them because, like, we changed the logic of it. Let's just make sure the rest yeah. of them pass too. Oh, I actually, know what you can do. Scroll up to the top, and by the name of the by the class, mm -hmm. you can run all of them just by uh, running the entire class. Yeah. Oh. Oh, wow. check that out. It's only five. Oh. Oh, yep. Okay. Look at that unit test. I found it. Find a bug, right? I missed it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. 
oh, you know what you did? I think you clicked on the class. It was trying to run the main method of the class, which it did. So, um, so go back to the test and run the tests again. Uh, well, actually, I had to run them all again. They're pretty fast. Nice. Okay. So let's see here. What, uh, what's, that? what's the next test that we should write? Um, can we write one that fails? It's like reasonable to fail? Oh, that's a problem for the next person. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that another minute, 17 seconds. Yeah. I was wondering <laughs> if there's a way to make this just like a generic non divisible by 5 tree title. Oh, so okay. Yeah, yeah. Exactly that. Your thought there. Um, oh, to basically, no. So it would just be like number is number. Oh, it's so like refactoring like that whole line there where you assert that and everything? Yeah. Oh, I like that. That's a good idea. That's good refactoring right there. Uh, but number is number. I don't know. It's not. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so like, what, do we want to pass in a whole bunch of numbers or something? Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure either. Um, oh, you know what? Okay, you can undo. We can also do a get revert. So like over there, maybe you want to do that, right? So over there in the margin where it's like gray, that indicates that there's been a change on that line. You can just revert that change. Okay, cool. Excellent. Oh, thanks. This is good. We, we got lots of work. Yeah, this is nice. Cool. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, what did you think? It was good. Yeah. I, I'm glad you did the way to convert that. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, you know, I suppose what we could have done also is like try to look online or something. But, yeah, that's yeah. what I would have done. Yeah. Okay, I'll remember that for next time. Sweet. Awesome. Thank you. And thanks for coming again. It was like big, I don't remember. I think so. Nice. Other observations about that? What do other people think? Anybody uh, on the on the call have some uh, anything like to share? Oh right, yes, because because I, you know, I was thinking that too. Because like, oh yeah, we could like have a a, a loop, but oh, but then it's like you'd have to have, want to have like the fizz and the buzz and and or rather, you know, you, you don't want to do. 15, so basically, yeah, the question, in case you didn't hear it on, on uh, remotely, was it's I remember actually more of an observation that uh, it, it's, it's hard not to just, uh, you know, in your test, basically implement the same logic that's in the program. Uh, and, and because, yeah, it's so simple, you, you, you know, you, you can think to do that. But, uh, but yeah, and that's, and that's actually one of the interesting things about this kata is that because there are, I mean, the logic is so simple, and I think it's something that we can talk about with the next pair. It's like, yeah, are, are we done with the tests? Um, and is there is there more to do? Cool. Okay. Thanks. Let's see here. Uh, thanks, Logan. Appreciate that. James, you're up next. Let's see here. James, you indicated uh, that you want to be a driver. Uh, yes. Okay. Oh, you're a little soft on the audio. I don't know if you're very far away from your microphone. Sorry, I'm often uh, too loud, so I turn it down oh, there you to go. start that's, so I don't blast that's people's great. ears. Very dulcet. There you go. Oh, light mode. Yes, I, like you, cannot see anything in dark mode. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just the way our eyes work, I guess. Okay, cool. Yeah, good. So oh, that was the... Um, okay, so yeah, let's get all 
get updated here. Hey, can you run the test just to see, just to make sure that we're uh, we're all passing? Ooh, I like that you did the run of the current file. I don't think I've seen that before. Let's see here, where would that take? Nice, okay. Yeah, let's get started five minutes. Oh, wow, so like, where do we go from here? Um, yeah, uh, I was trying to think of another test, but I'm not sure in the meantime, just make some consistency style choices. Oh, that's a good point, yeah. Oh, hey, uh, yeah, yep, that, that, that'll do it. You know, there's also, uh, you, you wanna learn uh, an IntelliJ shortcut? Yeah. Revert those good. changes. So yeah, go, go back to the way it was. And uh, let's see, I bet it's under the code menu. There's like reformat, um, uh, code. I know the, I know the shortcut. <laughs> oh, I re, I reformat code. Yeah, we're reformat file. Let's, let's see what that does. Oh, interesting. So that's what it shows. It did not choose parentheses. Uh, or did not choose brackets, but it did yeah, put the space after spaces. it. Is. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I, I like, uh, yeah, I, I like to have brackets there. I, I, when I was in graduate school, I spent like an entire day debugging a problem that ended up being because I didn't have uh, uh, brackets, and I swore never again. Or I swore to always put in brackets. Okay, cool, excellent. Yeah, we've done that. Yeah, the code looks good. It's easier to read. You know, we have a lot, we have a goodly amount of duplicate code over here in the test. Did you want to try to refactor some of that also? Yeah, except I'm not sure where we would start. Well, here's what I was thinking. So I had that whole like, you know, line 12, assert that fizzbuzz of some number equals some value. What if we just had a, a, a method that was just, I don't know, like assert fizzbuzz and you gave it three and fizz, right? So if we refactored out the number okay. and the, the the string, and just try that. What what do you think about that? Yeah, that sounds good. So do we just have? Oh, let's use IntelliJ. Yeah, oh, okay. let's, let's have yeah. let's have the IDE do the hard work. Okay. So yeah, so, uh, do, do you mind if I sort of like be directive uh, and no, uh, do these? Be specific. Stuff? I need it. Cool. Yeah. Excellent. So the number three highlight that. And then in the refactor menu, say uh, introduce variable. Uh, extract, introduce, yep, variable. Nice. Yeah, it's called a number. That's a good name yeah. for it. Now, now do the same thing with, uh, with fizz. Oh, yeah, you can use that refactor menu also. Nice. Oops, that was weird. <laughs> Oh, because the other one isn't finished yet. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I just hit return there or something yeah. like that to finish it. Good, yeah. Yeah. Well, let's and call then, that yeah, like result. Yeah, there you go. Oh, but wait, undo that. How about you use the rename refactoring to rename fizz to result? Look at that. Okay. Now, do you, now, what, what do you think about doing next? Uh, well, we're going to have to do this for all the other ones, so we probably want to move this outside of this test. Uh, well, well, well. But we need it to be three. Okay, never mind. So. Well, what we want to do is introduce a method that does that assert that, right? That takes in that number and takes in that result. And if you use the introduce method refactoring in IntelliJ, it'll do that for you. Am I able to do that with a refactor or do I have to? It is, yeah, it is a refactoring, but you okay. want to have the whole line, including the assert that. Yeah, okay. basically, yeah, basically that. Yeah, refactor and then extract method, yeah. Oof. And then, yeah, what do we want to call this thing? Call this, uh, I guess, just assert this suggest. Awesome. Yep, hit return. Oh, nice. And it's, did you get all of them? Ha <laughs> ha look at that. 
Very nice. And um, one more refactoring that, uh, that I want to show you. So you can inline um, the, ver in the variables uh, number and result on lines 12 and 13. Uh, yeah. You can inline those. Um, so I think it's a, I think it's a, in the refactor menu. menu. Refactor inline. Yeah. So do that for results. Nice. So let's run on the test and see what happens. All right. It looks like it didn't break anything. Sweet. That's a good refactoring right there, don't you think? Let's see all sorts yeah. of cool stuff. Nice. And that was our five minutes. All right. Perfect. So what do you think? How, how'd that work? How how'd that work for you? That was good. Uh, it was, uh, like others have said, it really helps uh, with the roadblocks. So often you're just like hitting your head against the wall when someone else sees the obvious solution. So. Well, cool, excellent. Thanks. Yeah, how about you, yeah, yeah, commit that in. Um, any other observations about that? So that was a completely different thing, right? Um, what did you notice? Oh yeah, appreciate the IntelliJ tips. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. Actually, that's a big part of of pairing. Is uh, is just learning how to use the tools, right? Uh, you know, I think I might have mentioned last week that you know I, I so much of what I've learned about like how to use these command lines is just by observing other people. It's like that was really cool. I want to do that too, right? And then just ask. So nice. Yeah, refactoring. Um, is there any resource when we can where we can learn more IntelliJ tips? Uh, I'm sure, uh, but you know, I'm sure that they, they have good documentation and there are probably lots of tutorials and stuff. But honestly, like what I would do is just walk through the menus. Uh, if you want to learn the shortcuts or you just want to understand, you know, hey, what are all the different refactorings? Um, you know, just look at the menu and see like, okay, you know, uh, oh, there's one something about extract functional interface or something. I don't remember what it's called anymore. Um, but I think that's, that's, that is a way to do it. I think that's, that's how I tended to learn it. Um, but uh, I'm sure there are lots of like, you know, tutorials with, you know, clickbait titles like, you know, 10 IntelliJ shortcuts that will drive you wild or whatever it is, I don't know. Nice. Great, thanks for coming in that in. All right, thank you. Yep, let's see here. Uh, and last, Pargati. Hi. Fine. Hey. So, so you're up, and uh, you want to do driver? You want to do navigator? This is uh, this, this is cool. Uh, um, I can be a navigator. That's okay. Okay. I will. Uh, I will drive. Then let me get my uh, share my screen. Let me get my IntelliJ going. Oops. I don't want to start just yet. And let's see here. So I will get all the stuff. I will run the tests. Oh, nice, thanks for posting that link, James. Everything passes. Okay, well, uh, okay, and so then we're off to the races. Oh boy, um, well, let's see here. Um, let's see. Um, first, can we make these, yeah. um, yes, first can we make these um, instances private? Uh, instance members as private. I can see that they're all just default. Oh, you mean these constants right here? Uh, yes. I think they need to be um, package protected so the test can use them. Let's give it a try. Oh, did tell me there's a related. Oh, they're problem. already final. Oh, okay. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, right. Because uh, because the tests use them. Okay. Well, that's that's kind of understandable. Um, so I think now that that one isn't is right. Yeah, you know, we didn't do anything with the main method. Do you want to do something there? Because I think technically what we're supposed to do is have a main method that prints out 1 to 100. Want to give that a try? I'm um, sure. Okay. So let's see here. Uh, well, let's see here. Uh, is, is it just as simple as just a for loop and just printing out his buzz? Um, we have to pass the number from the argument, right? 
You know, I don't think it says that. I, I think, let's see here, write a program that prints the numbers from one to 100. So now. Um, okay, let's run the loop and then call the method. Okay, nice. So let's see here, good old fashioned for yeah. i to zero, i is less than equal to 100. 100. I plus plus. And then uh, system.out.print1. Uh, fizzbuzz. Fizzbuzz and I. Nice. Okay. Um, so I so just like the same way, if you click on the the green triangle in the margin uh, on a test, it runs a test. You can also run a main that way. So yeah, it's running that. There it was. Let's, let's see if it looks right. So one two fizz or buzz fizz seven eight. Yeah, 10. Yeah, this looks pretty right. Yep, and then this was. Now, now we didn't write a test for that. Should we have? What kind of test is that? I don't know. Do we need a test for that? Could we do a I'm just wondering. Um, it's, it's some part of main method, so should we have the integration testing for that? Well, you know, uh, actually, probably what we we might need to fix our fizzbuzz IT. Yeah, because this is going to fail, I bet, because it expects it to print out no arguments. Oh, now Sean B did point out that it should have been from 1 to 100, not 0 to 100. Thank you. That's a good point. Yeah, what is what is 0? Uh, it's probably just 0. Or wait, no, it is divisible by. Ooh, now I want to find out. What was it? Uh, um, yes, any number mod of zero should be zero. We did not really cover that test case. Yeah, that's a good point because, well, I guess fizzbuzz because it's zero. And zero is, is what, 15. So this is like three and five. Okay. Yeah, we'll do one to see if that's correct. Um, oh, and we need to sort of get rid of this one. Um, um, we wrote mod of 15 first. I think that's why it's fizzbuzz. Any number by zero, it yeah. met the first condition and was fizzbuzz. Well, so let's see here. Um, well, what do we should do with this integration test? I think I might just, you know, can I ignore it? No, I probably need to have something that passes. Because what we haven't, I'm going to try to ignore it, or rather, um, um, disable it. Because um, what we haven't done is we haven't tried running this on the command line with Maven. So let's see what a Maven clean verify does. Well, that's running. Is there? Oh, uh, hmm. you know, I, I'm wondering is it really necessary to have this block? Because what if? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, this is nice and simple, but it's like, what would we, what would we is, there, is there a way to simplify that? I don't know. I can't think of anything, and now we're out of time. But it passed. Okay, well, that's good. Sweet. Gosh, so what was it like being the, the, the last person? <laughs> this, was, this was, I did not expect us to like start get everything working so quickly. This is, this is cool, but um, tell me about your experience. I mean, just run out of options if you go last. All <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. Uh, honestly, though, I didn't think I would get six volunteers, so no, I, I appreciate it. Um, cool. Okay. Uh, yeah. Now let's see here. Um, I think we're done. Right, this is, this is a, a is pretty easy, and it certainly showed it. But yeah, we uh, we covered everything. Yeah, nice going, everybody. The output looks good, and the code looks really clean. Um, so yeah, so 
Thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody who uh, to volunteered. Um, let's let's spend just like five minutes debriefing as a group. So just overall, now that you've seen sort of like the whole cycle, what did you think? Um, and what are some of the things that, uh, as you do your own pairs, which we'll start after a break, um, that, that you might want to take into account? So like, what is something that is effective that you hope to apply in your own pairs? I guess keeping in mind uh, the roles we're in, uh, navigator navigates, driver drives, um, the driver not like getting ahead of things and like typing things that the navigator isn't talking about. Like I could see myself doing that or the other way around. Um, so just honoring the process, trusting the process. Yeah, good. I like that. Uh, now, now I'm thinking it's like, oh, was I doing that? So I ho hope I wasn't. I apologize. No, everyone was fine. <laughs> that was not a call out on anybody at all. <laughs> it's probably me. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Jonathan, test cases, test cases, test cases. Yeah. And again, you know, we, we do that because we're learning test driven development. Um, and so, uh, yeah, that's how that's going. Okay. Anything that you saw that you really want to make sure doesn't happen in your pair? Anything that kind of confused you, turned you off? Oh, I like this. Hope I can learn from the navigator and a driver can learn from me. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's neat being in, uh, in, both, in both roles. It's one of the things I, I like about it. I, and one of the things that we didn't do in the past where we didn't, you know, we, where we were less rigorous about the driver and the navigator roles. Um, it really is a, a good way of learning, a good way of, you know, experiencing both sides of it. Great. Any other object, uh, option, uh, observations, feedback that people would like to share? Nope. Okay, well, thank you to the six volunteers and thank you for everybody else who is watching here in the operating theater. Let's take a break. Let's take a good break. Let's take uh, 14 minutes back at uh, 7.20 and uh, then uh, we'll talk about uh, your uh, individual experience or about the pair programming uh, activity you all are about to do. Stay tuned. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Thanks for coming back. Um, so tonight has been all about pair programming. And uh, we just experienced some uh, live uh, pair pro programming, pair programming in the operating theater, and you got to watch me and uh, six very brave volunteers um, implement the the FizzBuzz Kata, which actually turned out to be pretty straightforward. I think that worked well. Um, again, I appreciate everybody's time. Um, now it's your turn. So uh, you know we, we've seen pair programming in action now, and uh, I'd like you all to experience it for yourselves. So, uh, and actually, uh, I want you to uh, experience it so much that I'm assessing you on it. So, uh, here's a, a handout that's linked to from the from the home page. Um, you know, uh, I'll skip the introduction about what pair programming is and, and why it's important. Um, but I, I just want to say that you know part of what uh, I'd like you to get out of the course is not only uh, contributing to your own individual work in the assignments, uh, but also experiencing both pair programming and mob slash ensemble programming um, during these activities that we do here in class. Um, and so then, uh, as I said, tonight is the first of three pair programming sessions. Um, later in the term, we'll have three mob programming sessions. Um, and, uh, oops, sorry, I got some stuff on the screen here people can't see. Um, and let's see here. And, and we'll use this Kata's uh, repository for all of them. And so what I'll do is uh, I will create, um, uh, I'll create Maven projects for everybody so you can get uh, off and running quickly um, with it. Um, and, uh, and we'll see how that works in just a little bit. Uh, let's see here. Um, so, uh, you know, when we were doing uh, the, the, the pairing just now, we were doing GitHub um, ping pong, or, uh, GitHub 
Uh, we were using GitHub to send the code back and forth. Um, if anyone wants to try code with me, they can. It's actually pretty easy to use. Uh, but again, I, I always worry that it makes it a little too easy for the for the navigator to drive in, to to drop in and and start coding. Um, so uh, let's talk about um, how uh, how your pairing and mobbing experiences are going to be assessed. Um, you know, as I said, the, the, the point of the cause is to learn about test-driven development, learn about Java, and learn about IntelliJ, and things like that. Um, it's not necessarily to get them done. However, I want to hear about your experiences. So, uh, in terms of requirements, each student is required to participate in one pair programming exercise and one mob programming exercise um, during the course. Um, I, I encourage you to participate in um, in, in, in subsequent ones, we'll do one next week and then the week after that, um, both for the experience, but it's also just good coding and you, know, you get to work with some people, which is, uh, which is nice and different. Um, and uh, I'd also like you, and so then after we you know, do, do the exercise, we'll, you know, we'll spend a little time debriefing on it and talking about our experiences there. But also um, there is a, a quiz on Canvas that is uh, that asks you to reflect on your experiences um, pairing, and there'll be another one for mobbing. Um, and there, there's some short answer questions, um, basically, you know, like who you paired with, and and really, what did you think? That, that's what I'm interested in. And what I'm looking for is evidence of you know critical reflection on what it is that you did, what worked, what didn't work, um, sort of what you got out of the experience. Um, so let's see here. Uh, well, you know, yeah, please put in uh, a link to GitHub. And things like that, um, and and just in general, uh, you know, your experiences that night, and then is when 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 do you think that um, pairing and mobbing would be effective and ineffective uh, in other situations? Um, and uh, just because I think I told you, I, I once had some students that like cheated off each other, and they're like, but I thought we could pair program in this course. Like, no, um, the the in class exercises when we pair and we mob. That is when um, it's uh, it's okay to work with other people. The, the multi phase project. Sorry, that's an individual grade. I, I you know I give grades to individuals, so that must be individual work. Um, and here again, if you have any questions or whatever, please feel uh, please reach out. To make sure that we're all clear on uh, on what's going on. So, any any questions about sort of what the follow up to the the pair program will be? A quiz on uh, on Canvas that I'll ask some questions about your experiences. Nice. Uh, okay. So then. Uh, what we're going to do now is uh, we'll go into breakout rooms, and the four people here can find can create two pairs, um, and we'll work on a different kata. This is uh, the leap years kata. Uh, again, I, I expect this one to be pretty straightforward to people because what you're doing is you are uh, calculating uh, leap years. So let me just post it here in the uh, in the chat for everybody. Um, so basically, uh, hey, you put in the number of a year. Um, and it says uh, whether or not uh, it is a leap year. Um, and so then here uh, are the, uh, basically the criteria that you have uh, for, for, for leap years. Again, I think this is an excellent way to do test driven development um, and to do uh, pair programming too. Uh, to take a very simple problem and see if you can translate that into a, uh, a, a set of tests uh, and an implementation uh, of which the code is nicely refactored. I'll, you know, you'll of course have time to read this all in detail yourself, but sort of any question, I hope everybody knows what a leap year is and things like that. So it should be a familiar concept. Although, did you know that like, you know, divisible by 100 but not 400? I guess anybody who was around for like the year 2000 knew this, but you might have all been pretty young back then. Anyway. Uh, Okay, so uh, what are we what are we going to do? Um, we'll break. We'll go into breakout rooms, and uh, each breakout room in 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 the IntelliJ project has underneath the leap year directory. Each room has their own uh, Maven project, and uh, like for instance, room one here has a leap uh, a leap year room one class that has an associated test. I'm pretty sure I got all this right. I did a lot of copying 
file copying and renaming this weekend, so I apologize if I got anything wrong. Um, and basically, this is starting with that, that blank Kata template that we started with FizzBuzz, right? You've got, here, let me just move that to the opposite group. You know, you start out with uh, basically, you know, one unit test and, uh, and, and a main method and go from there. But we've got that for every room. Um, and so then uh, the first thing that uh, I, I recommend that you do when you get into the room is make sure that both people in the room can edit the palm.xml file for, uh, for your room. And this is a, a quick sanity check just to make sure that both people have the right, um, are GitHub collaborators and, uh, and things like that. And if you're not, um, please just summon me from the breakout room and I'll come in and make sure that, uh, that everybody's got the right access. So after performing a uh, quick little sanity check, um, uh, well, sorry, and, and, and by edit, I, I mean add your, uh, your names uh, for the, uh, the two students in the, uh, uh, who are participating in that pair. Um, also make sure that like the code compiles for you and everything like that. Um, and that um, I expected to be quite a few uh, changes that are pushed concurrently. So you'll have to be doing just like what we saw there, people doing you know, a, a poll to get the latest changes, even though they're for other teams, before you can push yours or pull other people's changes. There shouldn't be conflicts because everybody's working on their own project. Um, but here again, I'm on hand tonight just to uh, help troubleshoot any problems that come along. And um, I'll be watching the continuous integration. By the way, we have continuous integration on this. And so then it'll, um, it'll let people know when things uh, don't go right. Um, and uh, again, since we're all sharing the same repo, please be kind and make sure that your code um, compiles and, uh, well, it definitely compiles um, and uh, uh, it doesn't have to run cleanly, I guess. Um, please make sure it compiles um, uh, before uh, pushing to GitHub. So um, I encourage you to do Pomodoros. Um, uh, you know, have a time boxed um, uh, a time as a navigator and as a driver. Um, so uh, the first thing, uh, you know, when you get into your uh, breakout room, take a minute to introduce yourself. Uh, if you don't know who your, your, your partner is, um, uh, you know, be sociable uh, with someone who will be working with tonight. Um, determine who's going to be the first driver, who's going to be the first navigator. And, uh, oh, also there'll be, need to be a timekeeper um, for, the, for the Pomodoro. Um, maybe it makes sense for that to always be the navigator, but you all figure it out. Um, and we did seven minute Pomodoros um, for, the, for the operating theater activity. Um, I, I think we should do 10 minute Pomodoros when we're when we're in pairs. That gives um, the driver, well, it gives everybody seven minutes to, uh, to, to work in their role. Um, I think it'll give you a little bit more time to maybe implement some more code or have some more conversations. Um, and, uh, and then at the end of the, the seven minutes, um, uh, have a, a brief, like maybe a two minute reflection on, on the experience. Um, also commit the code uh, or, or figure out how to share if you're using code with me, that's great. Although eventually I would like all the code committed um, just so that we can, uh, you know, see, I can see how people did. Um, and, uh, and then after the reflection, switch roles. Um, and so then the new driver will you know, get the latest code um, and uh, share their screen or start doing it and, and do it. Um, and then, uh, you know, uh, it, it, look for opportunities that may have a little bit of a longer retrospective and sort of say, hey, take five minutes and um, uh, maybe capture things along the way, but definitely at the end, and, I, and I'll give you a, a heads up, because uh, we'll probably be doing this activity for, I don't know, an hour uh, or so. Uh, I'll check in to see how people are doing. Um, but uh, at, at the end, uh, do a, a little retrospective, just you and your, um, uh, and your partner. And oh yeah, we have a place to capture your learnings below. So I encourage you to capture what worked well, what didn't work well, and any ideas that you have for the future. Um, here and uh, and then we will uh, end the activity by uh, doing a report out um, and uh, I don't know if we need to go to every room but certainly anybody who is interested um, we can uh, we, you know if, if there are things that you want to share or you'd like the rest of the class to know that'll be that'll be time to do so okay any questions about this activity how it's going to work any concerns that people have about uh, what we're about to embark on
Uh, I have a question. Yes. Uh, so just to clarify, like after every Pomodoro, we have to be like, before that, we need to commit our code back and will we be joining the main room and we'll be discussed and then go into another Pomodoro or? No, no, no. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. No, no. Each pair stays in the Pomodoro. Uh, sorry, sorry. Each pair stays together. So uh, you, you and your um, your partner will spend about an hour um, pairing together, but every, um, every, but we're doing 10 minute Pomodoros within that. So, you know, every seven minutes, uh, you know, um, take two minutes to reflect, checking code, uh, we, and we won't, we won't um, check back into the main room, we won't reconvene in the main room until, uh, until, you know, an hour of Pomodoro has gone by. Okay, yeah, so we maintain the Pomodoro ourselves and then switch roles yes. around. After one hour, we come back to the main room. Okay, yep. yeah, thank you yep, so that'll much. Be, that'll be it. And here again, I'll be around and I'll be sending out, you know, uh, uh, news flash like announcements on um, on, on Zoom, so let everybody know how we're doing time wise. Okay, perfect. Excellent. Thank you for clarifying that. Appreciate that. Should we write the integration test for main as well? If you want, um, up, up to you. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not putting any restrictions on how the code is implemented, although I do encourage you to use test driven development. That's part of what we're learning tonight. Um, but yeah, if you want to uh, implement uh, the main, and go from there and use an integration test. You've got the infrastructure to do so, so I encourage you to do that. Or if you prefer a sort of more traditional unit test against a uh, a method or a function that's there in the main class, like we did with the FizzBuzz Kata, that's an option for you too. So it's a great; those are those are great discussions to have among the pair. You know, figure out uh, how you want to pursue it, sort of how you want to architect it generally. Sweet. Okay. Well then, let's go to breakout rooms. I am going to pause the recording and do some Zoom stuff. Okay, well, we're back. Well, we, we've just spent uh, probably the better part of an hour um, in, uh, oh, um, in, uh, in breakout rooms doing pair programming. Uh, I, and everybody is, uh, has captured their reflections. I am so interested in hearing uh, what people had to say. And there are a lot of breakout rooms, so we don't need to hear from everybody. Um, but if you, uh, if you would, um, no. uh, yeah, John, I'll, I'll get to you in a moment there. Um, uh, but, but if you would, uh, could you uh, come off, uh, could you raise your hand in, uh, in the Zoom? And if anybody would like to speak, to what they experienced. Um, uh, and again, you know, with an eye towards what worked well, what didn't work well, um, and any ideas of the future. So yeah, um, if, if someone would like to uh, tell us uh, about their experiences. Uh, Jonathan, raise your hand first. Uh, let's see here, which, which room were you in? Uh, room three. Room three. Okay. So, uh, yeah, what were, what were your experiences, uh, pair programming? Um, I think I want to say probably the most beneficial thing that, uh, at least between me and my partner, was actually even before kind of like even doing the drive and navigating was just talking about the program as a whole and kind of doing some brainstorming. And we even use like a whiteboard with the Zoom to kind of like um, kind of see like what possible test cases and stuff like that we could storm up and think of before actually kind of um, hard coding it into the test and into the program itself. Yeah. Cool. Let's see here in room four, who is your, your partner was okay, room three. Oh yeah. We, 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 with Timothy. Uh, Tim, Timothy, is there anything that you wanted to add on, on top of that? What, what your, what, the, what you saw from your point of view? No, I think you hit it pretty good. Excellent. James, you've also raised your hand. What were your experiences? What room were you in and uh, what, what, what did you experience? Um, <clears throat> I was in room 11 and I thought it went really well. I just wanted to observe that one thing I noticed after we came back in the main room that we didn't even think about were the breaks that are supposed to come with Pomodoro. We just kind of got into such a flow that uh, we didn't even consider taking a break, so that was interesting. It 
definitely felt smoother almost than working alone. So. Yeah, good. Yeah, it is. Uh, it, it's fun to get in the flow. And then, uh, but yeah, if you don't, and I mean, we were, again, and most people are okay for an hour, but yeah, you know, when all of a sudden you find that, oh, it's been like two or three and uh, maybe you're missing some of those signs of exhaustion. So yeah, it always helps to uh, just, you know, take, it's even five minutes and just like think about something else, get up, take a walk, just talk about something can be, uh, can be good too. What else would people like to contribute? Uh, I guess I can speak for room one if no one else has something to say. Um, what went well, I, I think was like the obvious, just being able, we did have three people in our group throwing that out there. Uh, being able to discuss like logic as you go, um, kind of suss things out is helpful, having multiple peeper, people there. I liked the timer. Um, I think that really helped. You know, it's really easy to kind of go down a rabbit hole and get stuck on something, but having like a timer go off really like disrupts that circuit and gets us rotating into different positions and approaching the problem a different way in that regard. Like, I would say attached to that, having like a longer cycle, like maybe a little longer than 10 minutes. Yeah. And it felt like as soon as we got like into a flow, it wasn't long until the timer went off. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. Yes. Uh, and that's something that I, you know, in some, some of the sources that I looked at for the, uh, for, for the pairing uh, lecture, you know, they, they said, yeah, you need to resist the urge to just like, you know, keep going and keep going. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so yeah, I mean, seven minutes, that's good. Again, maybe we can try uh, a little bit longer um, next time. Uh, were, were people, did, did people take the time to do the reflection at the end of the, uh, after the, uh, or towards the end of the Pomodoro? I'm just curious. Uh, we totally forgot about that. <laughs> we just <laughs> switched and yeah. Fair enough. We did in the beginning, but after a while we were kind of starting to repeat ourselves. So we just kind of focused on the work. Yeah. All right, nice observations. Let's see here. I think we had some people, or at least one team doing code with me, and most everybody else is doing GitHub. I'm, I'm curious about the uh, sort of the mechanics of of sharing code. What were anyway? There's people here in the classroom. I haven't been even making eye contact with them. But that's uh, that's not making eye contact with me. We are in fact. Um, is, is there anything that, that you wanted to, uh, to to bring up? I can amplify it for the uh, rest of the group. Designing. Well, that's right. You guys had a great sort of discussion and debate, a very healthy and, and productive one. Um, yeah, about like how granular to make all the methods, and yeah, cool, cool. And, and so, where did you end up with that? Actually, I suppose we just look at your code. Uh, okay, so, so I ended up going maybe a little less code route, although it might not have been as readable or as, or as good. Oh, okay, so you implemented more than you thought, yep. Okay. Nice. Okay. So yeah, you basically implemented those the, the rules that were there on in the in the kata. Uh, but then once you saw the implementation, like oh, this is too much code. This is too complex. You're able to refactor and simplify it. Nice. Uh, good lesson. Okay. Okay. 
No, sorry. And so I, I wanted to get, uh, yeah, so, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Co co so experience with code with me, a 30-minute 30 limit, uh, limitation, I think that's if you don't have an academic license. So I encourage you to get an academic license. Uh, but actually, I think only a couple of people use code with me. Can someone speak to what their experience was like? Maybe someone from room three, could you speak to what code yeah. with me was? Yeah. I thought it was really cool. It was, it was, I thought it was probably a little more efficient than having to commit and pull all the time because then you just literally just somebody else just started typing. And then my partner was having issues with his environment. And so by me hosting, then we didn't have to worry about that. So it was much more efficient. Nice, okay. Uh, just to add, it's a, I would say it's fairly simple to set up because they just, you click the button to code for me, the, they get a link that you send it off to whoever you're partnered with, that you click on the link, you open a browser, opens up your IntelliJ and you're, you're in it. Nice. And for the GitHub folks, you know, I, I'm really curious to, to know about your experiences with so many people uh, all working on one repository sort of all at the same time. I, it sounds like everybody was able to, to get it done, but what are some things that you learned or maybe what are some ideas that you have for, for the future? I think uh, the main thing is whenever we'll be working in future also, it's good to take a pull first because we know multiple members work on the team. So I think that's what we missed one or two times. So yeah, I think that would be a good habit. That's something I learned, yeah. Nice. The That's only thing good. that like kind of sucked about that was in that brief window between like running a git poll and then doing your git commit and then a push. Like in those seconds, if someone else on another team did a push, you'd have to like, okay, I have to pull this again really quick. And then again, really quick run this command. Uh, but that didn't come up that often. It was just like a little, peevish but yeah. not a huge issue yeah i was thinking it's like oh maybe i should be the timer for everybody and like oh no way then everybody's gonna commit at the same time so but i think people sort of staggered themselves so it wasn't too too bad cool um so let's see other people uh uh Zheng Mao? yeah actually i have some uh suggestion for this part probably we can use uh the fork feature in the github like the uh i'm actually i'm from the the room one and left the the session on the uh, Google Doc. So I think probably we can use a folk feature to uh, ask uh, the, the people in the rooms to fork uh, their own repository. Then they can uh, do it by themselves to reduce the time that they fall from the GitHub. Probably they can, after that, they can make a pull request for this, this part. That's my suggestion. Thanks. Um, yeah, you know, it was interesting. in. I, I used to have the uh, the pairs create their own repositories, and um, it took it, it ended up taking more time than we spent tonight. Actually, I mean, in years past, uh, I'd be going around and breakout rooms like twenty minutes in, and people would still be struggling to get to get stuff working. So, yeah, yeah. despite it being awkward while we're doing it, um, I think people were able to get off the ground way faster. Um, someone else suggested that maybe we can use branches. Which is yep, another thing that we could do to you know work more independently. Um, I just wanted to see how it went tonight, and uh, I'm curious what other people have to say. So, so James, you raise your hand. Yeah, this isn't universally better, but using the rebase and auto stash options really helped us speed it up because then we weren't writing commit messages for every merge. Every time we pulled, we were just stacking on top of whatever commits were already there. So, I don't know. If people wanted to use that, it's faster. Oh yeah, I I have to admit I, I have this weird fear of rebase. I'm always worried about losing things or like getting the the head disconnected or whatever. So, but good. I'm uh yeah actually here again. This is the experiment that we're running to see how how it's worked out. It's worked out pretty well. Jonathan, you had something else? Oh yeah, I just wanted to add um that at least because I am so um. I've trained myself to use like Vim and just using the kind of short keys for everything. So since I think my partner didn't have that, um, 
trying to work and just where I have to do everything by like arrow keys and mouse clicking was a little bit lethargic for me. But other than that, like it's pretty simple. Well, cool. Well, and and I hope that you know your partner learns something. And this is the thing, right? This is where that 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 um, strong style pair programming can you know can occur sometimes, where you've got um, one person, whether it's the whether it's the language, whether it's the tools, whether it's the uh, the, the technique, where you know, yep, some person has more experience than the other, um, and that's when you know the learning really happens, and uh, and, and so good. Um, yeah. Any anything else that people would like to contribute to the to the discussion tonight? Okay, James, yeah, thanks for posting that uh, repeat command there. Good stuff. Well, excellent. So, hey, I, I really appreciate everybody taking part in this tonight. Um, I hope it was a, a, a overall a worthwhile experience for you. We'll have another opportunity to uh, do it next week. The, the Kata will be a little bit more challenging, a little bit more involved. Um, but the nice thing is that you know every week you come in a little bit more familiar with uh, with, with with Java, with IntelliJ, um, and now with pair programming, customer development, all this great stuff we're learning. So thanks. One more thing in class before uh, we end for the evening, and that is the project three assignment. So, um, so far uh, we've we, well, let's see. Project one was due tonight. Um, project two, uh, you're you're probably getting started with now, and that builds upon those simple classes that you uh, built in uh, in project one to provide the ability to write the airline information out to a file and read it back again. Um, we continue to uh, augment the airline application in project three by adding pretty, pretty functionality. And this gives you an opportunity to learn about the facilities that Java has for sorting objects, sorting data, and then also working with dates. So uh, we're going to be taking the, uh, we're going to be an, an augmentation to the flight class. Um, now, instead of representing the uh, departure and arrival times as strings, now they'll be represented by instances of general util date. So, um, if uh, when you watch the, the second part of the core API lecture, you'll learn about the date class and, and how you can use that, and you'll be using it here in your project. So, please override get arrival and get departure methods from abstract flight to return a date representation of the arrival and the departure. Um, and then uh, as part of the assignment, you'll have to modify the get arrival string and get arri a departure string methods to uh, return strings that are formatted using the java.text.dateformat.short um, type. Um, and all this information about what these things are is again in that uh, second part of the core API lecture. So, so you'll be making some changes to your, your fight class. Um, also, uh, when uh, now, you'll be augmenting your flight class to um, make it so that flights can be sorted. So uh, flights are sorted against each other. Uh, first of all, uh, they're sorted alphabetically by their, uh, the code of their source airport. If you have two flights that, or multiple flights that depart from the same airport code, they should be sorted chronologically by their departure time. Um, otherwise, uh, flights that uh, depart from the same airport at the same time are considered to be equal. Um, and again, watch the lecture to understand what equal means uh, in Java. I highly encourage you to use the comparable interface, um, uh, have your flight implement comparable, um, and that will allow the flight to sort itself, or instance of a flight to sort itself with regards to a different flight. So you'll be learning about those concepts also. Finally, um, you'll be implementing a, a new airline dumper called Pretty Printer. So remember, an airline dumper takes an airline and dumps it to some, um, some destination. Uh, the, the pretty printer um, creates a nicely formatted text, text representation of an airline's flights. So where the text dumper create, uh, formats an uh, airline into a text that can be read by a well, computer, by the text parser, the pretty printer is meant to be, uh, the output of the pretty printer is meant to be consumed by a human. So I encourage you to uh, use the date format cl class to make your uh, dates look nice. Um, and then also there's a class that I uh, create called airport names 
which, uh, well, it has the names of airports, actually circa probably like 2004. Some of them are out of date, um, but it's probably all the ones that you've heard of. Um, and uh, these are all the, all the ones in the US that you've heard of. Uh, and, and please use that in your pretty printer also. So the whole idea is, is that you're looking to have a, a, a nice looking human readable representation of the, uh, of the airline. Also, uh, another thing that pretty printer should have is print the, the duration of each flight in minutes. Are there drums outside? Okay. Is like a protest or something? It's something, yeah, right. Band practice just got out. Anyway, sorry. Um, and then finally, uh, there is a main class called Project 3 that drives all of this. That has the same functionality as the first two projects, but there is a new option called Dash Pretty. Um, and Dash Pretty uh, takes a file argument and uh, will print the con it'll pretty print the contents of the airline that you're working with. Um, uh, to a text file, or if the file argument here is just a dash, it'll print it to standard out. Um, and just a couple more notes here, um, including an, an important one, which is that the format of the date and time on the command line is no longer 24 hour time, it's now 12 hour time. And so uh, a date and time, which would be, uh, you know, a, a, a departure time or an arrival time, is now three command line arguments. The first one is uh, the, the date, the day, and then you've also got the hour and an AM, PM. So more stuff for, for you to change there. Um, just as usual, uh, notes about error handling and make sure that your uh, program um, provides a nice user-friendly error message um, when unexpected things happen. Uh, like, hey, the command line is wrong, uh, the format data time is wrong. Um, oh, also, uh, a new requirement here, if a flight's arrival time is before its departure time, um, then uh, that, is, that is obviously incorrect, so please check for that. And don't worry about time zones. Um, uh, we'll just assume everything's in the same, same time zone. Lots of uh, north-south traveling, uh, I guess. And then also, uh, if the uh, three-letter code that's uh, on, provided for an airport does not correspond to a known airport. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, what can you say again, please? Uh, can you use local date? Uh, uh, for parsing, maybe, but um, a local date is not a Java util date, and so then uh, you need to convert it back to a Java util date. But yeah, you can use lo local date. Um, it might be more work than necessary, though. Yep. And so that's it. Um, that's project three. Um, you know, historically, this one hasn't been as big a deal as uh, projects uh, one and two. Um, and it is due February 8th, with it, which is in two weeks. So, you know, uh, reality check here. Uh, you know, lots of stuff is kind of piling up and going in progress, right? Project two got done, got done. project three is starting. I got the cones also. Um, things will kind of taper out in another week or two, but this is probably the more intense part of the course where you've got a lot of stuff to, to manage, but hopefully like the coding that you've done tonight and certainly all the stuff that you've done in project one will give you good momentum going into this other work. Let's see here, any other questions about the project? Nope. Yeah, I have a question. Yep. So as we are now including AM and PM to our arguments, so the length of the arguments will increase. So it will break the code test cases of project one. So we have to um, like manage project one, improve edit code of project one to so that it will not fail the test cases according to project two, uh, three now. Yep, yes. Um, this is one of the main tricks about project three is that uh, you know the format of the command line has changed. And so then, uh, yes, the um, you know, the tests may need to be updated, so the code will be needed to, uh, be, uh, be needed to update. Yep. Basically, the logic and the pattern check will also be changed now. Most likely. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Can I crush anybody else's spirit? Okay. Too late. Already crushed. Okay. Nice. Anything else for tonight, then? Uh, you probably already said this, but just as a reminder for myself is the, the pair programming quiz 
It says it's due on the 15th. So we just finish that anytime before then. Exactly. Right. Okay. So cool, if, you, cool. if, if you want to reflect on tonight while it's still fresh in your head, I encourage you to do so but because there are three opportunities, you know, you might want to, uh, you know, to do it after you've had some more time to, okay. to experience cool, it, cool. but you may do it tonight. It is open and can be completed at any time between now and the 15th. Awesome. Thank you. So in three pair programming, we will have like three partners. So is it we have to mention in the quiz about all of them or only one instance of pair programming? We have. To uh, I, I don't remember. Uh, at least one of them. I don't think it's super important. Nice. There was a question about uh, like Timothy asked if he was collaborator, and I think the answer is yes. Oh, no, it's not. Yeah, Timothy, I'm going to need your thank you. Here. Otherwise, okay, I think this is it. We are uh, good to go for tonight. Thanks. This, this is fun. I, I really uh, I had fun pairing with everybody. We'll do some more uh, next week. Have a good night, everybody.